U.S. Farm Report is brought to you by John Deere. Where can you find the most comprehensive inventory of John Deere certified pre-owned tractors, combines, and sprayers? Machinefinder.com. Sometimes the best new addition to your fleet isn't new. On the Road with Machine Repeat is brought to you by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. As another year closes, ag equipment dealers are no strangers to a last minute push to buy equipment. However, the uptick in demand for 2017 may be for a different reason. This week, Tyne Morgan is on the road with Machinery Pete in Elkader, Iowa, visiting Bodensteiner Implement Company and reflecting on another year. As the sun strives to peak out on this cold December day, Northeast Iowa farmer Joe Sherborne is reflecting on another year's work. I think if we looked at our data, it's probably third best crop. A good crop, but one that came with many weather challenges, barely able to harvest during the month of October. So then uh, November came around, we were all sweating, thinking that, uh, you know, winter's upon us, and graciously we had a super November, so we finished up strong. So it turned out really well for what we went through, so we we're happy. He says corn yields were off from 2016's record crop, but still above 200 bushels per acre. Soybeans were the disappointment on his farm this year. Soybean production in this corner was just disappointing. Just um, August was dry, September was dry, and we just didn't get the rain to finish out the, the grain field that we were hoping. But uh, it was just an average crop is probably what we could say in our county. Our average is roughly 57 in this geography, so. And for some people that might be very good, but you know, we're traditionally up in the lower 60s, so. But it's those good yields helping generate an uptick in demand for local equipment. We've got uh, some demand in combines that's picked up, um, some demand in planters with a real tight supply of planters. Uh, we've seen a, a premium coming for, for good late model use planters. I'd say the large row crop tractor market has picked up for us this year in, in our part of the state. Jared Walls grows corn and raises livestock in Northeast Iowa. We've purchased a forage harvester, combine, a couple different tractors, tillage. We pretty much, from like 2012 to now, we pretty much almost got a fairly new line of equipment. But not every farmer has upgraded equipment recently. Bowden Steiner Implement Company says it's those farmers who held out purchasing machines the past couple years finally starting to re-enter the market. We see a lot of customers that are maybe falling back into more of a, a trade cycle based on need versus want. So they're, they're at a point in their ownership cycle of the piece that they're needing to upgrade where it, it's time for, a, time for a change to get to a lower hour machine or a machine with uh, warranty. It's a trend machinery repeat is seen across the country. I think what we're seeing in November and December, these very strong prices are just pent up demand. You haven't been buying that new or used tractor combine planter, you maybe put it off for a while and you need good equipment right now. Those windows in the spring and fall are short, so it's just a premium on the good stuff and prices are strong. He says it's that increase in demand that's been surprisingly strong to close out 2017. It's kind of across the board, honestly. Uh, if it's just good condition, a couple years old, you know, tractors have been really strong November and December. If it's good condition, low hours with a few years on it, we're seeing kind of the highest price of the year tick in the last six weeks across the board. And it's that demand machinery Pete is watching into 2018. Now, 13 and a half and a 15. Given the number of auctions that the pricing has held as solid as it, as it has. And now the one thing I'm starting to wonder is what would happen if corn ticked up just a little bit. And I think we're setting the condition for whenever that happens, you know, some, some pretty strong demand to be released, I think. He says combines have been drawing stronger values, but it's also planters that are in high demand on this lot in Elkader, Iowa. Yeah, it's been a process. I mean, like Chris was saying, you, you look at planters, the supply of used planters, late model planters back 2013, 14, 15 was, was high. And across a lot of the segments, that inventory was high, but dealers have done a lot of great work the last few years and worked that inventory level down. And now you're right, we're starting to come out the other side and see these situational uh, tightness. We uh, went through a period of pretty broad planter supply, I and mean, that inventory's worked through the last couple of years. So we've seen values come back up uh, from where they were maybe in the 2013-2014 seasons. And for Sherborne, a good planter is key. First of all, the planter is very important to our operation. With that, we can't do anything else. So we'll continue to look at ways to improve it.
He bought a planter in both 2013 and 2015, one of which is a high-speed planter, allowing him to cover more acres faster. But it's more than just the speed of the planter of interest for Sherborne. It's the precise seed placement. Very much uniform. In fact, a little bit more uniform with this one because the seed was more even in the ground. And it's technology that's helping him be even more precise on every acre. Well, technology with the monitors takes more longer than the physical wrenching of the planters these days. So. Um, we, you know, we continue to you know, upgrade prescriptions and, and just look at our efficiencies or inefficiencies. And so those are things that we do to, to try and improve the operation. He says one area where he saw the need to improve was on the inroads. So we found out that our yields aren't as good on the inroads compared to the center of the field. We looked at what we could do to improve. Uh, we continue to work on, on the nitrogen side, make sure we don't overapply, be good to the you know, stewards of the land and find inefficiencies, do check blocks all those things. He says with the newer technology, it makes prescriptive farming even easier. I jokingly say there's 16 planters on this planter. Each row can do its own thing. So I could tell this row to plant 42,000, this one only do 20, which is exaggeration. But I got 16 planters out here. Each row can run up and down. This row can do its own prescription. And so in our in-row management, this row will physically plant 40,000. This one will do 39 or 40. Bowden Steiner Implement is seeing the need for this type of technology grow. It's back to being driven by the technology. People wanting the, the new, latest, greatest features of the planter, if it is the electronic drive or the hydraulic down pressure, but just that, that extra advantage that they didn't have with the previous machine. Whether it's upgrading equipment or deciding to add on to the equipment a farmer already owns, Machinery Pete says he's watching the changing trends as we enter the new year. So we had pretty variable yields around the country. So uh, particularly with late model big ticket stuff, there can be some pricing opportunities if, if you get into an area where the yields were tough. Harvest wasn't, uh, wasn't that good. Uh, the planning situation, 2017 affected yields. So could be some buys uh, different parts of the country early this year. We're optimistic here ahead of 2018 planting that demand will continue to, to increase. Uh, I don't think we're going to see anything drastic um, from a gain, but I think we're on a trend that's, that's moving in the right direction for us as a dealership. And as the sun sets on another year, Sherborne is thankful for what he has. Well, my father and I, we, we're in for the challenge of it. Uh, we like producing and uh, it's fun to raise a crop, nurture it, watch it grow. You know, those are our joys every day. Joys that come with the challenges and triumphs of farming. Reporting from Elkator, Iowa, I'm Tyne Morgan. All right, thanks, Tyne. When we come back, Machinery Pete returns with Tractor Tales and the story behind a Michigan 4320. Stay with us.